Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to today's science class. Okay? Today we shall be working on natural science and how the claims work and how burden of proof works. Okay? I'm going to try my best to um, keep this free from sarcasm and any jokes. Um, obviously I've made the effort. The white suit and the glasses and the apparatus means that I'm a scientist. Okay? Now you should be taking me seriously now. Okay, so there's this claim that's going around that we live on a spinning globe or ball. Like this. Okay, now in this claim it is stated that oceans, water can conform to the exterior of a sphere. As you see here from Australia, the landmass here to, we'll say, Mexico, you can see this huge thousands of miles high hump of water from one point to the next, okay? Now, that is a claim on a model that should be observable, testable and repeatable by every single person alive, and today we're going to try and achieve that, okay? Now, we're going to actually observe and do the experiments. We do not need excuses, like it's too big or blah, 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 we'll get to that. Let's just continue with this experiment, okay? Now the claim is, water conforms to the exterior of shapes. Let's find out if that's true. <coughs> what will we start with? We'll start with the ball again. Okay, now. Remember the claim is that water can conform to the exterior of spheres. Upside down doesn't matter. We'll even give it an indentation to see if we can create the mound. <coughs> now, as you can quite clearly see, the water is not mounding to the shape of the ball. The water is staying level. Because in my experience, that is exactly what, how water behaves. Okay? I'm turning the side and the water falls off, lands on the ground and starts to find its own level yet again. Alright? So, another claim that I hear is that if we get a golf ball, and we wet the golf ball, like so, that we will get water sticking to the ball. But as you can see here, the water is finding its way to the bottom of the ball and dripping off. We get what's called surface tension and some water will cling, but... Adhesion. Adhesion, yes. But the water, um, the more that water is there, it will gather and it will fall off the bottom. Okay? Now you need to remember the claim. The claim is vast bodies of water, oceans, conforming to the exterior of a shape. Okay? Which means also... Well, what they're actually saying is that you can have a shape but when you put gravity and start spinning it, the water on that conforms to the shape of a ball. The actual right. rock of the earth is more like your burst football as okay. opposed to being a perfect sphere. Okay. I thought I'd just I thought I'd add so, that in there. So this gravity thing, this claim of gravity, what is this <laughs> gravity? Has it been proven? I don't think so. No. Okay. Now, the burden of proof lies with claims, okay? Now, if you're claiming the earth is a globe, we should be able to recreate it and observe it at any scale, any level, okay? Now, where were we? So, we've done the golf ball, okay? Sample. Right, here we have a body of water, okay? We'll give it a wee bit more. Yeah. What if it may ruin the edges? It seems high on the middle. Oh right, aye, aye, that, that hump in the middle there. Because <laughs> that's the curvature of the air. Okay, now, we all know that water does not support itself, okay? This is a this is a basin. The surface of that water will be flat. This is what we test and we observe 100% of the time. Now, it doesn't matter if I increase the size of that basin. The physical properties and the physical laws will not change, okay? It doesn't matter what size or scale you say it's at. If somebody is claiming that on a larger scale 
that you can start to bend the sides down and have the middle of this water higher than the sides, the burden of proof lies with them. Because that is not what we test and observe 100% of the time. Testing, observing, repeating is natural science. That is the language that we need and that's the language we use. No excuses, no mathematical formulas or equations or stories or insisting that at some greater level that the, 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 the laws of physics break down and you can have a slope without the water flowing and the water's conforming to it. Because if it's a claim about reality from the micro to the macro, it should be testable, reserve, uh, repeatable every time. Okay, now, the globe. As I say, from here, well, let's see, from here to here, there is a huge hump of water in the middle. Okay? It's that's almost not, half their globe, isn't it? Yes. So that if they're saying the that the diameter is 8,000 miles, then theoretically that water from the centre of the globe is 4,000 mile high. Yeah. Right. Got us. Yes. Now, can we observe this? Can we recreate it? Is it reality? No, it's not. Okay, now, this is a globe model. Okay, as you can see, it's a toy. It's plastic, okay? It doesn't contain rock, dirt, air, you know, a real model, a representation of the claim you're making. This is a plastic toy, okay? So, can I build some sort of model um, to, to describe where we could be, the possibilities of where we could be? Sure I can. Because I can go over the first hurdle of explaining the oceans and actually showing how the oceans work. And it's very simple if we come back to this, okay? Now, how many continents are we saying? Seven continents? Apparently. Seven, okay. Unless you look, apparently one. there's a new Tibetan two. map found. I <laughs> <laughs> don't know if you've heard of that one. Another claim of a map. Now, here is a basic model that I can start to work with of how the earth could possibly be. Now, it doesn't have to be a square container. It could be any shape of container because at the end of the day, the natural physics of water will tell you that it has to be contained. Okay, which rules out the exterior of shapes like a globe or a football or a square or a triangle or a pyramid, anything you want. It has to be a container and the water will take the shape of its container. Okay. Now, here's a basic model. I can add some dirt in here. I don't need to go into a lab or contrive any, um, you know, recreate any any conditions. We're out here in the observable world, in nature. We have the pressure, we have the air, we have everything here that's needed. Okay? Now, this is a representation of how the water must be behaving. Okay? Now, all you do is enlarge Can I just that. add that what you might actually hear from folk as well, obviously, the gravity that we are in is affecting this, yep. right? So there comes my question. When did they actually find something else to test gravity on? Yes. To prove it? Yes. You know, something that can be repeatable and observable. Well, this is the religious part of these these claims that are made because this is natural science. Now, they are making claims, they're invoking a, a, a mystical energy to tell you that at some un... Um, you know, on some... Um, it's not been specified size or scale that these physical laws and properties start to change. Mm. Okay? Now this is the scale that we see it on. No. And saying that the, 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 the earth underneath is having an effect or the gravitational pull is just an excuse. You know? We're using the water, we're using the claims that are being made and this is what we see. This is the observation. Right? Now if anybody wants to claim that it behaves, dif behaves differently, the burden of proof lies with them. Right? Now this tells me that Whatever the Earth's true dimensions is, it has to be able to contain the oceans. You know, something like this, it could be the inside of a sphere, it could be it could be the inside of any shape, but it has to be able to contain it. Right? If there's no wind and currents or anything happening, the water's just too left to be still, it'll be flat, like you're observing here. Okay? Now, I don't know how else, how, how, how much more simple we can make that, you know. This is natural science. This is how it works. What do we observe? What do we test? You know, what do we see to back up claims? Now, that claim of the globe with the rotund water is no reality. You know, the water doesn't support itself in the middle to the side. You know, from the sides. Yes. So here, 
This is called guttering. Okay, this is to collect water. And it only has to be at the slightest degree, even a tenth of an inch, in order for the water to flow. And it'll come down to the end here and it'll run off or it'll find its way into a drainage pipe. So let's have a wee look. <coughs> and again, we're using an instrument that's used because we understand the natural physics of water. You know, we can depend on it every single day. If this was slightly uh, angled up here or here, this wee bubble would move and would let us know that it's not level. Okay, so let's just have a wee look. We're going to put some water into the drain. Alright. Okay, we had, a, we had a, a minor malfunction there, so we have to splice this together. So we were at the point of the guttering and showing the slight angle for the water to flow. So, we'll pour the water in here. And as you will see, the water is finding its way to this point and running out. Now, to show you, sorry Marty, this is the claim that is being made, okay, as we say, this point here is higher than this point here. So, if per se we're here in the UK, and we have England here, which on this globe shows you that that to there is a lower point of elevation, these people are trying to tell you that you can have a body of water between two points, okay, one higher to the next one relative to each other and have the body of water in between without the water flowing. Absolutely ridiculous. That is not what we observe and test, okay? We have guttering in every home with a slight angle so that the water flows and drains away, okay? So, and as we say, how do you think they judge sea level? How can you judge sea level on a globe? You cannot. The reason you can judge sea level is by this example here, because we know vast bodies of water, you know, from one point to the next will be at the same elevation in every possible direction. That's why we can say, oh, well, this one here is so high above sea level, and this one here is so high above sea level. That's how it works. That's reality. That is nature. Okay? End of story. Wherever we live, it has to be able to contain the ocean. That's a fact of life that people need to stop denying. And anybody that does deny it, they need to come forward. Okay? I would love to see it. Not oh, cool. So, that wee instrumentation you've got there, mate, what do you utilise that for? This? Uh huh. Well, this is for my heartbeat. Uh, your heartbeat, mate. <laughs> this is a pressure gauge. Uh huh. Which leads us on nicely to the next claim. There's a pressure gauge. In fact, there's two pressure gauges. On the left there, we've got a compound gauge because it actually reads negative pressure as yes. such, no vacuums. <laughs> and then obviously on the right, we've just got our normal high pressure gauge. Yes, Ooh. so, this next claim then, Aye. as we will observe, the globe. Oh, hello. Vacuum. Okay. The space round is a vacuum. Atmosphere. Air. Pressure. Okay. A different pressure from the vacuum. The vacuum is negative pressure. We live in positive pressure. Okay. Now the claim is, is that this is existing with no solid barrier between the two. Because what we observe and we test 100% of the time is equilibrium. Okay. Without the solid barrier, it'll equilibrate. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of that. Ta-da! Oh, we have the globe! Full okay. of hot air perchance. Full of air, <laughs> which is at a different pressure from the environment that it's in. The only reason it stays at that pressure is because of the solid structure that's containing it. The plastic. Okay. <laughs> this plastic. The claim is... Now, when I remove this, this should keep its form and all the air inside should keep that pressure, okay? Let's see what happens. Okay. Can you hear that? What's that noise? Oh, I think we're experiencing equilibrium <laughs> between the two opposing pressure systems. 
Again, something that we observe and test 100% of mm -hmm. the time. Now that's actually no any kind of stretched rubber like a balloon or anything. No. So you could actually leave that, you don't even need to press it yep. and it will sit. Yep. Because the pressure in there is the same as the pressure out here. Yes. But if you were to squeeze that, yep. you're creating a greater pressure, yes. which in turn equilibrates yes. the rest. So, Simples. this is your globe, okay? The only way that the globe or anything like it would be reality was if we all lived here on the top and we had one ocean like so okay because if you go oops it runs off are we getting this yet? you know I'm just like a scientist I'm showing you repeatable observable tests that you can all repeat and do your, on your own people bringing mathematical equations or formulas or drawings are insisting that it is something else a liars charlatans pushing religious nonsense Okay, this is the reality we live in, right? I hope you get this and you understand it. Okay, so we understand to, in order for the pressures to work. If there's a vacuum beyond us or if there's water or some other medium, there has to be a solid separation or we would have equilibrium. We live in pressure, therefore we must be in some sort of sealed unit. Okay, now something like this but it would have to be enclosed. Okay. Now there's a possibility that we could go and meet this guy <laughs> outside of our system. This guy might be looking in, waiting for us to realise what the fuck's going on, you know, and wants us to come for a visit. But we have these religious nonsense people who are trying to keep us in this pen. Okay. Now let's just take another analogy because this is what I'm trying to say to people as well. Right, here's my prisoners. Here's my prisoners here. These prisoners believe they live on a globe. Okay? Now, their whole life I've fed them books, um, literature, philosophy, religion, toys, toys distractions, you know, now these hostages are now at a point where they realise that the area I'm keeping them in is a lie, that it's no what I told them it was, okay? Now, these hostages now have a, an option or a choice. They can sit here, okay, looking at the stuff I gave them and trying to make sense of it, okay? Or, they could just get up off their ass and start exploring to possibly find the way out or to find the full dimensions. Right. You know let them look. Because <laughs> everything that, that, that they've got in there, I gave them. I allowed them to have that. Okay. Now people you need to realise this reality of the water, the ocean. It's all one thing. Okay? Now what are they hiding? What are they trying to prevent us from doing? They're trying to prevent us from exploring. There is something that they don't want us to find and discover. Okay? Now we need to stop the cack. Right, all the speculation, the argy-bargy about models and debates and blah 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 I have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that wherever we are, it has to be able to contain the ocean and that's a fact of life and that's it. And pressure. And pressure, okay. There's nothing else to discuss. It's full disclosure and full exploration now. No other choice, no other option. Or else we're just going to sit in the middle of the shit that they gave us arguing and going round in circles. Yeah, I hope you understand that and I hope you've enjoyed today's science class. Okay? Hopefully we'll be returning with some more science class. Alright? Anything else to say, Marty? Yeah, it's all covered, mate. I was enjoying the lesson. Yes. Yes. And we got a gold a star. We're in nature, we're in the back door. It doesn't matter. We don't need a lab or any contrived conditions. We are here in the world that we live in, observing it in its natural form. Okay?